Welcome to Crimepedia. My name is Cherry. I'm your host. And with me is the man who was cool before COVID. It is Morgan. Hello. (laughs) (laughs) That was smooth. That was smooth. (laughs) Very smooth. Uh, Hello. (laughs) (laughs) How's it going? All good. Thank you. Yeah, all good. It's a nice sunny day here today. It's lovely. So we've got the, the rain and the wind has gone and we've finally got a bit of sunshine, oh, which is nice. Yeah, it's nice, here. it's nice here too. Like finally, so we don't have like your our typical like hot sweltering like August day. It's actually real nice. So yeah, able to get out earlier and go uh, go hiking a little bit through uh, one of the metro parks here close to my house. So that was real nice. Yeah, that is good. Did you get much rain from that Stuart storm coming over towards you, didn't you? Yeah. Well, we had um the remnants of Hurricane Laura, which which kind of came through. Uh so we had we had rain on Friday. So you can tell I'm English. I'm I always talk about the weather. <laughs> I know. <laughs> no, yeah, we we had rain come through, some heavy bands of rain that came through like Friday, but yesterday and today have been actually real nice. Hopefully we don't get like tail ends of this kind of stuff. We seem to get it always after everybody else. So it always seems to be the tail end of something. We've had like crazy weather, crazy like floods and like Mm -hmm. literally in my hometown, it rained for like an hour nonstop and flooded the whole town. It's crazy. We've never had anything like it, but it was an hour of like proper, like just jumping off the floor rain and it just couldn't cope. (laughs) Everyone was flooded. Houses like three foot of water. It was crazy. Yeah. But now today, nice well, and sunny. Well, when it on Friday evening when it started raining, it was like the time that my my daughter was over at a friend's house, and so mm. it was like that about that time when she was supposed to be coming home, and yeah. so like it starts pouring, and like I get a text from her friends, you know, her friend's dad saying, "Hey, we're just gonna we're gonna keep the girls here until the rain, yeah, you know, calms down." Idea. But it was is it kind of is it bad that like. We were kind of excited, like, oh, okay, like, we got more time. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, that's what every honest parent will be, yeah, will be saying to you, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I'm just going to sit there and go, and be like, oh, I'm so sad she's not back yet. Oh. <laughs> and you're like high-fiving your wife, yay. <laughs> <laughs> so what's news? What's news for you? Anything exciting going on over there in your news? In my news, uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> we keep getting we keep getting like the the political stuff from your side coming over. Oh, it's all going on, isn't yeah. it, over there at the minute? It's so boring, though, isn't it? Politics is just so boring. It is. It's boring. It's just... Yes, I think that's the big news now because the past two weeks we've had like the whole. Um, I think it was two weeks ago we had like the the Democratic um, National Convention where they officially announced Joe Biden as like the, their candidate. And then last week it was the Republicans. So yeah, we're hearing a bunch of that. Yeah. So yeah, we're now in that definitely in like the, the, the political mud, you know, I think it's everyone's going nowhere just had enough, the haven't months. they? Exactly. Just yeah. all it's going to be on all your news stations. is just going to be politics, mm-hmm. politics, politics. It's just, rubbish. yeah, I think the, we have that. I think the other thing really in the news going on right now is probably, um, I don't don't know if you do you hear about the the police shootings in Kenosha, Wisconsin, oh, where yeah, the guy was shot like seven times in the back. Yeah, yeah. And then it was earlier this, this week. I can't remember what day it was. Where there was a seventeen year old kid who was going with they they called themselves a militia, so they were like these you know these gun right guys or whatever. So they went there oh, to protect no. like a uh, to protect a car dealership. Yeah. And they're carrying like AR 15s or whatever. Well, oh, he ends no. up shooting three people, killing two of them. Oh, no. And so it's a, it's a nightmare. So it's like, 
why is, it, well, is this know. like I'm happening not... more or is it just being publicized more because there seems to be so much of this like police shooting and this you know there seems to be so much more of it and i don't know whether it's because it's happening more or whether it's because it's being reported think, more now i think it's being reported more to be yeah. honest i think yeah. i don't think it's happening more i just think it's being reported more yeah we're just hearing um, about this it more. yeah this stuff's been going on going on for years and years and years and it's just so, horrible isn't it it is it's <sighs> And I don't know. I don't know what is. I I can't sit here and tell you what needs to be done to, to make no. things change. Mm. I I don't have no idea. It's this is something that's been ingrained in our society for way too long, and it's not. Yeah. It's not it's acceptable. Not cool. It's and not it, cool. Yeah, and it goes beyond just police shooting. I mean, it's racial profiling. It's it's uh, not even. I would just go beyond racial profiling. It's sex. You know, it's inherent sexism yeah. in, in our society. Yeah. It's racism in our society. And it's, it's just all wrong, isn't to, it? It is. It's just all and wrong it, on so many levels. I don't understand it. I mean, it's it's there's no need for it. I don't there's understand no why people it. just can't. I just don't understand why people can't get on. You know, people believe different things. Mm-hmm. That's fine. You yeah. believe different things. That's cool. You believe that. I believe this. Great. Let's just live alongside each other. Why do they have to resort to like, it, you know, killing each other and and hurting yeah. each other? I don't understand why. The, I, honestly, mm-hmm. I just don't get it. I really don't get it. Isn't it? Wouldn't it be just so much easier just to treat everyone the same, right? Ex- it takes exactly. more effort. It takes more effort to hate someone, yeah, than to just treat them like a per, you know, a human being. Exactly. That's the thing. That's the one common thing throughout everything is that we've all got hearts. We've all got blood systems. We've all got lungs. We're all the same. Everybody is the same. No matter what color your skin is or, you know, where you're from, where you grew up, who your family is, you're the same as the person standing next to you. No better, no worse. So I just don't understand why everyone can't have that mentality. I just, I just don't understand. I don't know. Don't know. Weirdos. And also we had some good news, though, didn't we? Because um, we we talked about it a bit before. Sarah Turney, who is, um, I follow her podcast, um, The The Voices for Justice. She is, she, her sister went missing in um, 2001, Alyssa Turney. um, And Sarah has been sort of campaigning. She sort of started on TikTok, really. And everybody was taking the mickey out of her, saying that going on TikTok and making videos would never catch the killer of her sister. And then she was convinced that her father was the person that was responsible for Mm -hmm. her going missing. And now he's now been arrested and charged with the murder of her sister, Alyssa. Isn't that crazy? So I would just like to... Yay to you, Sarah, you go, and all here. your hard work. Here's big big uh, fat claps yay. to you, lovely. Well done. Oh, my goodness. That's crazy, right? No, and good for like, her. She hasn't stopped campaigning, and she hasn't stopped. Mm-hmm. She's just been literally fierce with it. You hear so many times of people campaigning or, like, trying to get the word out to, to solve these crimes and murders yeah. or whatever, and it doesn't happen for whatever reason. But this time it does, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. It just goes to show that, you know, you believe something and you work hard enough at it and you get as much, you know, she's got so much coverage for this and she's been, she's been so good. It must be really hard for her because it's her dad. I mean, that must be really hard for her to have to campaign and to, and to try and prove that her dad murdered her sister. And now like, what is it like 17 years later or or, or 20, nearly 20 years later, her sister now has got a little bit of you know there's a little bit of justice for her so it was her dad Alyssa was yeah michael was her stepdad Step-dad, right dad that's right yeah okay yeah yeah mm. how crazy is that oh so crazy yeah, yeah. now i mean we we've, we've gotten we've gone that far right so i think the last step is to get a conviction right yeah let's hope so i'm but, crossing everything yeah. that, that they do get a conviction for him was he already or no he had been in jail i don't know if he was yeah still he in had jail. yeah i can't i don't he was he still in jail now I or no i don't think rele- so i think he'd been released he's a dodgy okay. character i mean if you go and listen to the story if you go and listen to the podcast and listen to the story i think it's quite obvious that he had something to do with it and and it's just proving it. it's one of those things again isn't it it's just proving that he did and now finally after all this time they've managed to actually get enough to arrest Ugh. him those are the worst cases. I can't. Yeah. Those are the hardest ones to listen to. The ones where you know, mm. you know, this is what happened, right? You know who did it, mm. but you, you just you can't 
you know, you're grasping, trying to find something to stick or you need finding that one piece of evidence to, to make sure that justice is served. So, so yeah. to hear, hear that, well, justice, well, yeah, we're on the way for justice being served. Is it's been really all that thing. time. And, you know, some people would have given up hope by now, but they haven't. And they've just carried on going and going. And finally, finally, he's been arrested. So I'm going to keep everything crossed that it gets through to conviction. And they put him away for forever. Forever, yeah. Forever, ever, forever, ever. Forever, ever. <laughs> So that actually yeah, brings us very nicely onto this week's case. And before we get into this week's case, I would like to say that this this case is horrible. Um, I know that all the cases we cover are not very pleasant, but this one in particular is not a very nice case. It does deal with child, um, you know, indecent images of children, that kind of stuff. So if this is something that upsets you or triggers you, I think maybe give this one a miss because it's, yeah, it's not a great, not a not a very nice case. It's hard to listen to. Mahuncliff is a market town in Powys in Wales. It has a population of around 2,235 and is sometimes known as the ancient capital of Wales. It's full of antique stores, alternative lifestyle shops, galleries and bustling markets. It's also home to a little girl called April Jones. On the 1st of October 2012, April was playing close to her home with her friend. That evening, April didn't return home, and as her mum frantically searched, she called April's friend. The friend said that a vehicle pulled up whilst they were playing, and April happily got into the driver's side, smiling. April was never seen again. So April Jones lived at home uh, with her mum, Coral, her dad, Paul, and her sister, Jasmine, and brother, Harley, on the Brinagorg estate in a place in Wales called Machuncleth. Now, this is another one that we had struggling to pronounce. So if any Welsh listeners are listening, I apologise for my atrocious Welsh pronunciations. Let's say, let's say that again. It's so Mahun- it's Machuncleth. Machuncleth. Yeah, Mahuncliff. Yeah, I think that's how you that's how you say it. Mahuncliff. Yeah, Mahuncliff. But it looks nothing like that. But okay. So the way it's spelled, the way it's actually spelled is M A C M A C H Y N double L E T H. So it looks like Machinleth, but it's not. It's Mahuncliff. Apparently. <laughs> Mahuncliff. Okay. Yeah. We're getting there. Um, so yeah, so she was born, and it, that's where she that's where she came from. She lived with her mum and dad, brother and sister, on a small estate called the Brinigorg Estate. Um, she was a mischievous little girl who was had the nickname of Little Devil because she wasn't naughty, but she was quite mischievous. Um, and I've got lots of pictures to to put onto our Facebook page and also uh, onto our Instagram and stuff. Um, and she's such a cute little girl, just really, really sweet, really lovely little girl. Um, and she. She had a bicycle, um, which was like an independence for her because she had she was born with um, mild cerebral palsy and she used to get quite tired when she was running around and if they went on long walks and stuff. So she literally had this bicycle with her all the time. So wherever they went, she'd have a bicycle and it was it's a really cute little bicycle. So, you know, it's one of those little ones and you see the little girls with and it's all pink and they got like tassels. And so it's that kind of cute little the kind of thing you see in my girl. Remember, remember Thomas J and, and Ada's. Or a, what, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Vader, Vader's little bike. It's, it's, it's a bit like that. Um, so on the 1st of October, um, April went with her sister to a swim pool. So this is in 2012. Um, she went swimming with her sister for her swimming lesson. Um, she came home, her sister went off to youth club and April went out to play with two of her friends. So I'm not sure if it's the same sort of in America, but the, where the kids kind of, it's like a small little estate. So um, in Wales, the place in Wales where this is, it's very leafy green. It's like there's lots of hills. There's lots of, um, I would say not really mountainous, but there's still like a lot of terrain where it's like that. And there's this small little town sort of in and out, in and out of places. And this is one of those small little towns. So the kids yeah. kind of play on the block um, just outside their house. Um, and April was playing with two of her friends. Her mum then realised that she hadn't come in yet, so went to see April's um, friend's mum to see where she was. And April's friend, who was seven, said that she had gotten into a car outside the house. So her mum was like, well, hang on a minute. She got into what car? So the girl said, well, she got into a car. She was really happy and really smiley. um, And she got into the passenger side 
of the, the driver's side, sorry, of the car. Okay. So, so outside of outside of her house. Yeah, just went, literally. Yep, yeah, okay. just just down the road, just outside her house. So she got into this is car absolutely fine. So it seemed like it. She was happy to get in. She wasn't dragged into the car. She just willingly got in. But an important part of this is that she got into the left hand side of the car, which over here is our driver's side. Oh yeah, no, hang on. Yeah, it was left hand. Right. Yeah. So it was. It's a left hand drive car that she got into. Sorry. So. It would be normally would be... the driver's side, but actually on this car, it was the passenger side that she got into. Okay. We don't have a lot of left-hand drive cars here. So left-hand drive. So that would be what we have here in the United that States. That would be like right? your car. Yeah, like your cars. So that would mean to us, we would get into your your passenger side to drive. So it's and around... You said she got... And she got in on the left-hand side? So she got in on the passenger side of this car, but the little girl actually said it was the driver's side because she obviously doesn't understand that it's a left-hand drive car. So when she told the police, she got into the driver's side of the car. The police were like, okay, okay that's weird. But then realized that actually she's talking about a left-hand drive, oh, which then narrows narrows okay. the amount of cars down because there aren't very many left-hand drive cars here. And especially somewhere as small as, as Brinigorg Estate, there's not going to be a lot of cars around there. So that was a huge, huge clue for the police that mm-hmm. there's not very many of these cars that they're going to be looking at. So she described the car to the police and said that the vehicle was small in front but large in the back. So the police were then thinking, okay, is this like a a Ford Connect van or maybe like a Land Rover, Uh some kind of like small at the front, bigger at the back, maybe a van of some sort? Um, It was blue. So that's really all the little girl could could say, that it was was small small at the front and long at the back. See, I'm trying to imagine that. Small in the front Mm. and long in the back or that's large what she said. In the she back? said it was, it was small in front and large in back that's what she said okay oh so like it could be almost like well i mean that could be anything it could be like like a minivan where like the the like the like the, like the engine block small is that, that that's what i'm assuming she's referring to so when yeah she said it's small it's not like a normal car so i would think straight mm-hmm. away she'd be talking about some sort of van but she yeah, says, yeah, yeah, yeah. she says it's a car. Um, so the police are like, okay, this is a bit strange. So we know that we're looking for a left-hand drive. Obviously, she's got in the car with a person. So perhaps it's somebody that she knows and they haven't mentioned to her mum that they've got her. So maybe there's not too much to panic about. Um, yeah. Now, this was on the 1st of October. Now, on the 2nd of October um, at 8 a.m., the police were notified that from the CCTV in the town centre, that a left-hand drive Land Rover, a blue left-hand drive Land Rover, was seen driving in and around um, in the town centre. So straight away, obviously, the police have gone, right, now this is a bit strange because it's in the local area, it's blue, it's a left-hand drive, it's smaller in the front than it is in the back, so that that goes with what she's saying. And they managed to get the plates, run the plates, plate check, and it was a man called Mark Bridger. And he lived mm-hmm. a few miles north of Mahuncliffe. So he's living in the area. He's driving the car that she, she sort of described. Um, and he actually knew April because his children went to April's school. So okay. police are then thinking, okay, maybe if she knew of him, that's why she's got in the car happy and smiley. Because if it's a dad at the school that she goes to, Mm-hmm. Perhaps that's why. So it's all seeming to be quite, um, you know, quite good, to, too good to be true, really. And then witnesses came forward because obviously the the mum and the police were then starting to worry now because she hadn't been home. They couldn't find her. There was no, nothing, no trace of her whatsoever. Um, and then witnesses came forward to say that they'd actually seen Mark Bridger on the Brina Gorg estate that day, the day that April went missing. Mm-hmm. So this is all pointing to to this guy. He he's a very strange man, I think. He's forty. He's forty six at the time. He he's not. A, I wouldn't say he was a scary looking man. He's just like a normal looking guy. Um, he's got six children of his own, so it's 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 crazy to think that maybe he might be responsible for something like this. He the police went to his house to to obviously to speak to him, and he wasn't there. Um, when they went into the house, they found that the house was very hot 
Um, there was a roaring fire. There was a wood burner in the fireplace and the wood burner was roasting hot, um, which was yeah. slightly unusual that the police thought. And they could smell detergent and cleaning fluid, which mm. straight away makes you think, okay, most houses don't smell of detergent and cleaning fluid that quickly, you know, that, that, yeah, like yeah. that, that strongly. Um, and so obviously they're now putting an alert out because they're trying to find this guy, can't find him. And then a patrol car is just driving along the road and happens to see him walking just along the roadside with his dog. And they, so they arrested him and took him into Aberystwyth police station for questioning. He was very calm when he was uh, arrested. He was not sort of worried like you would be if you were arrested on suspicion of a child going missing. He was really calm, didn't show any emotion whatsoever, wasn't worried. Um, they said it was quite eerie that he was so calm. And they took his they took his clothing, took that off for analysis, and then swabbed his body and put him in, obviously, into the police cell. Now, as he was booked in, the CCTV um place came forward and gave him gave the um senior investigating officer a guy called Andy John they gave him footage that was it was taken about five hours before he was arrested and he's just casually walking along walking his dog like not not uh -huh. uh, you're not a care in the world there's a police helicopter over the top of him town has been cordoned off and there's people everywhere searching for April um oh there was so he just, yeah, he's just he's walking just, his dog, just calmly. Like nothing's happening. Like nothing. Didn't even look up at the police the police helicopter. Normally, if you see a helicopter, you look up, don't you? Even if you know, yeah, you just look up out of curiosity. But no, he didn't even mm -hmm. didn't even look up. He just walking along, walking his dog. Now, this has been um, described as the biggest missing person search in Brit British police history. It's the biggest search we've ever had for um, looking for this little girl. Um, he. I, he makes me really mad this guy so we've got to the point where it's almost 24 hours since she was last seen and they mm -hmm. they've got him in custody and what they do is they do an what's called an emergency urgent interview so they he has no counsel with him so he has has no solicitor no nobody with him it's an which is quite worrying in itself because yeah, yeah. you then get the worry that, you know, he's going to say something and it won't be admissible in court. But they, they basically take him in and they ask him, did he have anything to do with April Jones going missing? And I was going to play you the audio of this. However, I, I think it's quite chilling and I don't think it's, it's just horrible. It's just horrible to listen to. He basically says, so I've transcribed it for you. He basically says, I'm really stupid. I had a few to drink and there were two girls on their bikes. I remember the dark haired girl coming behind the car. I looked to see where the other girl was and I couldn't see her. The next minute, the bike was just there. I started up the car and as I started to pull away, there was a thud. There wasn't a thud, sorry. I can't understand, but there wasn't a thud and the car rose up. So he then says, I opened the door and I walked round and underneath the front of the car is now, I know, to be April. She was only little. This is where he starts to cry. Um, uh -huh. He says, so I picked her up, put her across my seat and put her on the passenger seat. I then tried to take her pulse and there was nothing. I put my mouth over her mouth and that makes me really cringe. He put, I put my mouth over her mouth and I went to blow. I put my hand on her chest and that's when I realised one side of her chest wasn't there. I'd obviously crushed her. I'd obviously crushed her little body. So I then drove out of Brinny Gorg. Um, so he's okay. admitted to being against, there. He, yeah, but this goes against what the friend said. Exactly. Where, where she got into the car. Exactly. So he's basically now put himself at the scene. So he's inserted himself into the scene to say that he hit April, um, mm -hmm. that he didn't see her. There was no there was no thud. Um, he hit her. He picked her up from under the car. He put her across his passenger seat, tried to, to tried to give her mouth to mouth, but then realized that her chest was crushed. So the police now want to know where April is. So he then goes on to say that he drove with April out of the Brinagorg estate. He remembers driving back down the road, which is a back road. And then he had intentions of taking her to get medical help. So that's just normal, isn't it? You run over a child, you just pick them up and put them in your car. You don't shout for help or call 999 or 
you know, try and get some help there and then at the roadside. You pick the kid up, you put them in your car, and then you drive away mm-hmm. with them. That's totally, yeah, yeah. totally normal, I don't think. Um, so that's what so that's what he says happened. So he's now driven away with April. So he's saying that he's got her in the car, he's driven away with her, and he's left he's left um, the road from Brinagorg into a place called Monument. And there's a big like clock tower um, where this monument, like a monument, is. He says he goes down by the railway station. Then he turned round and went back to the clock, and he realised that oh, April God. had no colour. So he then says she had no colour and her lips are purple. Okay, so big issue with this that I have, all right? So I'm looking go at on. a map of where this, is, where this is occurring, okay? Yeah. So to go from the estate, yeah. I'm, I'm not even going to try to pronounce it, to the Brinigog. clock tower. Yeah, yeah. Brinagog. Yeah. He had a drive past a hospital. Yes, exactly. What? I know. <laughs> so he even had to drive past somewhere he could get her help. And so he's basically yeah. saying he's driving around in a bit of a panic. He then looks down and realizes that she has no color. Bearing in mind, he's already said he tried to take her pulse okay. and she she didn't have one. And that he tried to give her mouth to mouth and she didn't have a chest. So he's already, you know. Oh, my God. So, so like looking at, like, honestly, he could have driven from from where he was to yep. the hospital in like less than five minutes. Yeah. Probably like two minutes, right? Yeah. Not only that, there's a fire station right there. Yeah. There's multiple places that they can get help. It's not a big place. There's multiple places that he can get help. The other thing is he knows April's mum and dad. He knows them. Oh, oh, well, from school, right? Yeah. So so he knows where they live. He knows he knows that that the the vicinity that he hit April in is just by her house. Mm -hmm. So I don't you know, if this is true, what he's saying, why did he not? you know, shout and tell that little girl to go and get April's mum while he phones the police or phones the ambulance. I, You know, it doesn't make any sense to me at all. It really doesn't. And there's no reason that he should have been in this area no. to begin with, correct? No, no. He said he had, a, he had a few to drink and then he didn't say where he was going. He just said he was, he was parked up and the girls came from behind him. <sighs> I don't believe him. No. I don't believe him either. I think he's a lying piece of shit, to be honest. Oh, yeah. And he makes me really mad. He, um, The police reported that at the time um, he was crying and he was crying these big, massive tears. But when they actually, mm-hmm. when he looked up and looked at them, there was no emotion on his face whatsoever. So he actually didn't have a crying face. There was no tears running down his face. It was just these big tears, like theatrical tears on the table. There was nothing actually in his face to show that he was really, really upset. Um, Something that's very important, I just want you to remember for later, is that he said when he looked at her and when he put her in the car, there was no blood. So there was no blood whatsoever in the car. She wasn't bleeding. Bearing in mind, he just hit her with a Land Rover. And Um, apparently had lost half her chest or whatever. Exactly. Clapped chest. Okay, but no blood. There was no blood. There was no blood on himself and there was no blood in his vehicle or that he could see on April. So he's now in the in the vehicle. He's got this girl, this, you know, five year old girl with him who's who's dead. Um and then he's very, very vague about what happens next. So he's very clear about what happens up to this point to when he gets to Monument. And then all of a sudden, he gets very vague about the next steps. So he then says to the police that the next thing he knew, he was back at his house and April was nowhere to be seen. So he jumps mm. from being in the car with her to then being at home. And she, there's no, she, he doesn't know where she's gone. He can't find her. And he's searched his house and she's not there. Oh, I'm sure he did. Of course. <laughs> um. So let, let's, let me, okay, let, kind of backtrack. He said mm-hmm. he, he was married at the time and he had kids that went to yeah. school with. Six kids, yeah. Six kids. Now, were the kids home when this no, was going no, all, no, all well, this no, one, no one was home. There was no one in the house when they got to that, when the okay. police got to the house um, and saw the fire and the chemicals and that there was nobody there. So I, I can't find anything online to see whether the kids live with him. From what I'll tell you a bit later on when they search the house, I don't think the kids live with him. Um, because it seems very much a single man's house. Um, so whether he's he's separated from his wife or is not, I couldn't uh-huh. find that much information about him as a person. Um, 
other than the fact that he used to be a, a work in an abattoir. So he used to be an abattoir worker. Okay. A, a what? So abattoir? Yeah, you know, like when they yeah. slaughter where they slaughter animals. So Oh. What do you call that over there? Okay. I don't know. Animal slaughterer? I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. <laughs> I mean, it's not it necessarily a, it's not necessarily a butcher. I mean, because a butcher is the one that kind of yeah, just chops. I don't know. I think they're just call. I think they just call them um, like a meat processor, right? Okay. I okay. Guess. Yeah. Well, over here we call them abattoirs. It's very posh, isn't it? Abattoir. abattoir. It yeah. is. What do you do? I'm an abattoir. And it sounds yeah, really sounds posh, really, doesn't it? Really but fancy. actually, it it's not that fancy at all. It's horrible. It's a horrible job. So that's what you used okay. to do. So that kind of gives you a little bit of an insight of. How strong so, his stomach yeah, so is. Yeah. And you said he lived, would you call it a college, a cottage where yeah, he lives? So he lives in this kind this small little cottage and it's out, it's just outside of Mahuncliffe. Um, it's right by a really fast flowing, it's not really it is a river, but it's not mass, it's not a massive river. It's like more like a stream, really, but quite a okay. quite a deep stream, I suppose. Um, it's not one of the huge rivers. So he but he does live very, very right in the woods. Um you know, quite far from everybody else. It's not so, it's quite isolated, I would say. There are houses around it, but it's, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll put a picture on actually on our Instagram so you can see the house. You'll see what I mean there. It's like this little thatched cottage place. It's quite a nice looking house from the outside. Um, okay. So it looks like, okay, I'm kind of reading up on him a little bit as you're going yeah. through this. Yeah. So it looks like he must not have been with his wife. No. It looks it like from he, the had pictures a, he had a girlfriend. The, the pictures of the inside of his house look like yeah. um it's a very it's like a bit of a bachelor it's, it's like a man yeah man pad it's not really that it's not really it doesn't look like there kids. would be a place where kids would be li- living no no oh yeah here it is yeah okay i see yeah so, so he had a girlfriend at the time but but was not with his wife it looks like he also isn't Welsh. So obviously he lives in Wales, but he, he isn't Welsh. He moved to um, from London to Wales in the 80s. So when if you do listen, there are there are the tapes of his interrogations are online. You can listen to them. Um, there's also a program on Channel 5 over here that, that, de- that deals with the interrogation tapes. So you can actually hear them for yourself. So he's got an English accent. He hasn't got a Welsh accent. Um he also was convicted for lots of different things um, before this happened with April. He was convicted for lots of violent offences, such as battery, threatening behaviour. He was also arrested for assault. So he's, you know, there's, he's not a very nice man. When you, when you look into his, into his, um, his history, he's mm-hmm. not a very nice man at all. Um, and now, obviously... He's, I think he's in a, I think he's in HMP Wakefield now in Yorkshire. I think he's um, there's lots of where the really is category A prisoner, which is the most dangerous prisoner in the country, um, mm, okay. which is where he is at the moment. So obviously now police are not sure, to be honest, if if April is even dead at this point because there's nothing other than his say so that that she's been killed. There's no trace of her whatsoever. Um, so what they do is. They speak to him. When they speak to him, he says, I wouldn't have ditched her. I would have I would have laid her down and covered her over. I wouldn't have just ditched her. But I can't remember where oh, she is. God. Mm-hmm. So he can't remember where he where he's put her. So <sighs> yeah. CCTV again comes back to them and says that they've actually seen his car leaving town minutes after April was snatched. So he's actually left mm-hmm. town. So they've they've got that on CCTV. You can't see her in the car, but they have got CCTV's vehicle leaving town. So they they went and had a look at the vehicle, his vehicle. The forensics looked at the vehicle, and obviously, if you were to if you were to knock over a small girl with a car as big as a as a Land Rover, you would expect to have some sort of skin tissue, blood, um, yep. you know, something like that. Now, the police um, check the front bumper, which um, at the underneath of the car, because that would be where if he had run over her, like he said in his story, there would be some kind of DNA, hair, blood, mm-hmm. something like that underneath. And there was nothing, nothing at all. He did have a yeah. broke, broken front bumper, but the forensic guy said that that was not a new a new problem. It was, it was something that's obviously happened. The damage has happened beforehand. So there's nothing. 
They also checked the inside of the vehicle and there was absolutely no trace of April whatsoever. No hair, no fingerprints, nothing in the inside of her of, of his car. Yeah. Which is very strange. So they interview Bridger again. They do another interview and they tell him that they have a witness. They don't tell him that it's a child. They say, we have a witness. And the witness said they saw April getting into your car and she was quite happy. And at this point, he turns and he gets really angry. And he says it's a complete fabrication and it's lies and it can't have happened because that's not what happened. And he gets really cross. So the police are now starting to see a different side to this like really placid, laid back, quiet guy. He's starting to get yeah. quite angry. Um, and now, obviously, we've got nothing in his car. So there's actually nothing linking him other than this seven year old girl saying that the car that she saw is similar to that of what he's driving. That's all we've got at the moment to say that he had anything to do with April's April's um, go, April going missing. And the fact that he's actually admitted to him knocking her over and killing her. So the police now step up the search and they have mountain rescue involved. They have Coast Guard, RNLI. They have public searching. People were queuing around the block to sign up to search, to help search for April. Um, and they they paid special attention to the area around his house because of this fast flowing river that I mentioned earlier, because obviously that's quite, it's quite telling, isn't it, to have something like that there. Um, and they gave him maps so in his police cell, they pinned up maps all up on the wall. They gave him maps to look at, see if it would jog his memory as to where he might have left her. Um, and basically, he just says he's got no recollection of where he put her. He has no idea. Oh, so they're they're playing his game at this point. Yeah, because he's getting all this attention. And whilst he's pretending to look at these maps he's kind of like trying to second guess where they're going to go next he knows that the, yeah. he knows himself that the only real witness is going to be that little girl that there's nobody else that's that, that was around at the time because he's not stupid he's obviously looked around and i don't think he was drinking at all i think that was just to you know throw them off so they called mm -hmm. in a forensic psychologist um, who is a brilliant brilliant man absolutely brilliant he's called dr joe sullivan and he is a leading expert on the criminal mind. I would love to have a chat with him. Um, he's worked on some of the biggest murder cases in British history. He's worked on the Soham murders. He worked on Madeleine McCann's case. Um, and he was basically brought in to give officers an insight into how offenders like Bridger uh, process information and how they respond to certain types of questioning so things that they shouldn't say to him and things that they perhaps should drop in there and he basically said to them don't don't try and appeal to his better nature because to be honest he hasn't got a better nature don't mm -hmm. try and sort of go in there because the police sort of went in there with the idea that like you're a dad you've got a daughter how would you feel if this was your daughter wouldn't you want this to be sorted and and Dr. Sullivan said, look, that's not going to work. It's, it's not going to happen. He, he, he doesn't show empathy like a normal person. He can't yeah. correlate that information. He can't see why that would make somebody like that upset. So he did this psychological profile on him and went to the house to look in his house to see if he could like start building up this profile. So inside the house, there's a shotgun above the fireplace. As soon as you walk in the door, it's the first sort of thing you see. There's um, handguns and replica handguns. That's not really, we don't usually have like handguns over here. Um, yeah, it's yeah. not something that's normal to us. Shotguns, maybe if you live in a rural area, because there are a lot of people that do shooting and that kind of thing. But generally, your guns have to be locked inside a cabinet and you have to have a license for them. Um, so it's not something that you, you normally would see handguns lying around a house. He also had SAS survival technique booklets in his house, quite a lot of them. He had um, knives, like hunting knives, stuff like that. And he sort of... They, Dr. Sullivan said he kind of believes himself to be this kind of Rambo-esque, SAS, kind of like survivalist kind of guy. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> Which if you look at All him. All right. <laughs> so not. Um, he also said that he's got lots of different psychopathic traits. So he mm. has no major sense of guilt. He won't. He doesn't feel guilty. He has no empathy. He won't confess. So Dr. Sullivan said, doesn't, I don't think it matters what happens. He will not confess to this. You will not get a confession out of him. So what you need to do is basically try and trip him up. So 
they tried to then they took a different route to their questioning and tried to find inconsistencies in his story because there was no way he was just mm. going to give it up and say yes okay i killed her and this is why i killed her and this is where i've put her um yeah yeah so the police then obviously like i said they went through this whole you're a father what would you do if that was your daughter and he 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 Oh, in the interviews, he's saying like, I know, I know, I feel so sorry for her mum and dad. And I'm so sorry for what, you know, for, for me running her over. And, you know, if mm. I knew where she was, I would tell you from the bottom of my heart how those police officers could just sit there. I just, oh, I just want to reach Not across the table. Not him or punch yeah, him? Or... That's right. Punch him straight in the face. So two and a half days later, after, you know, after she's gone missing um they still they're still searching for her that he's still not given anything up and our prime minister at the time was david cameron he then made this big appeal on television his one of his children i think it suffers from cerebral palsy so it's something that sort of touched him and he made this appeal for anyone to come forward um and and to tell what they know and people did yeah. people did start to come forward there wasn't anything conclusive that they that they could come forward and say but the forensic mm-hmm. teams were then able to move into his house to see if they could find any trace of April whatsoever so they've obviously got their warrant they've gone in there in the bathroom they located some tiny spatters of blood now they're really small spatters of blood. I'll put the pictures up on our um, Instagram page so you can see what I mean. Mm-hmm. Um, and they they rushed these samples off to the lab, but they would take twenty four hours to come back to to see if they could get a DNA profile from these from these spatters of blood. Meanwhile, a witness comes forward to say that on the day that April or the day after, I think April went missing, they saw him with a black bag, a black bin bag, coming out of the woods by his house, uh, about a mile from his house, and getting into his car. So he's a mile from home. He's got a black bin bag. He's coming out of the woods and getting into his car the day after April went missing. So that's suspect straight away. Yeah, yeah. So you're either taking something to woods or you're retrieving something from the woods, if that's the case. Because why else would you go into the woods with a black bag? I don't I don't understand. No, I don't understand why. But yeah. that's that's all they've said. There's not there's no trace of this like it's like a been, you know, I don't know what you call it. I guess a refuse sack. You trash call bag them over there. Yeah, like a trash bag. But like yeah. a tr- trash bag. Yeah. Yeah. So like a plastic, plastic trash bag. That's that's what he came out. So that's suspicious straight away. So three, and it was, it, it, yeah, he's out in the middle of nowhere with yeah. a plastic bag. Okay. A mile from his house, so he's not really far from his house. So what would he be doing in the woods? That he's driven to the woods as well. What would he be doing mm. a mile from his house? with a black a plastic bag in you know coming out of the woods it's just mm-hmm. exactly. that's weird exactly so straight away that's odd um so we then get to 3 days after she's been missing for 3 days now and then they arrest mark bridges they actually arrest him properly for the murder of april jones he, okay so they so they they pick him up they did a, they pick him up the day after as well no, uh, yeah they picked the up they picked him up the day after but they they just took and him in for questioning and obviously they've held that's him. when he was questioned without yeah. uh, without legal representation okay and that's then right. they released him so, so he didn't have, essence, yes yeah so he had really until that they picked him up on the second to get rid of the body then after they let him go so almost no, they he haven't got, they didn't let him go days. no they didn't let him go so they picked him up the day after oh, they've got him so basically yeah he's in custody okay. so you've got 92 i don't know if it's the same over there but we have like 92 hours and basically you can only hold someone for a, for that amount of time if you haven't got a case yeah. big enough to for the crown prosecution to prosecute um and charge him you have to let him go So for the police, this is a race against time to try and get as much info as they can to be able to charge him with her murder. So three days after she went missing, they actually they actually arrested him for the murder for the actual murder of April Jones. So this was before it was like a suspicion of her going missing. Now it's the murder of her. So it's now been changed to a murder case. But they also further arrest him, and this is where it gets really sick. They further arrest him on position on possession of child pornography after finding mm-hmm. a laptop in his house full of indecent images of children. Now, this the images that they find are very graphic, very violent, and the police question him again because they've just arrested him. They question him again about this laptop. And they show they show him pictures, graphic pictures of the things that they found on his laptop. 
and they ask him to describe what's happening in the pictures. Now, to a normal person, it would be very difficult to describe something like that. It would be horrible to look at. It's something that I yeah. never, ever want to see. And I don't know anybody that would, you know, happily look through something like that. And it's so, ma- if you listen to him talking, it's so matter of fact. He just describes what's happening and he just describes what's going on in these pictures. And the police say, How do you feel about that? And he says, Well, I have, it, it doesn't affect me sexually whatsoever. I have no sexual connection to that picture. Just, just matter of fact, like that. Oh my God. He doesn't yeah. like look away in disgust. He doesn't push the picture away. He doesn't grimace. It just is what it is. He it's just, like, okay, yeah. it is what it is. Yeah, he just reads, he just says basically what's in the picture. And there's no emotion on his face whatsoever, like there would be in a normal human being. Mm. Um, the police then now believe that, that this case is a sexually motivated case, that he has got some sort of sexual gratification from ch- child images and that this is something that he searched. He's actually put it into the Google searches. So it's something that he specifically searched for on his computer. Um you know, so he says that he doesn't remember searching for them. He's got very, very suspect memory, this man. He doesn't remember putting that into the mm-hmm. Google searches. He doesn't know how that got there, of course. He doesn't know how it, how it got there. It just there. popped up. I don't know. Exactly. It just happened. It just, yeah, just right. happened to get there. So you didn't type it in. You didn't sit there and look at it for hours. It just happened to be there and your computer's lying. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So now the police then have to notify April's parents that this is no longer a missing person case this is now a murder inquiry which must have been horrendous to have to do yeah that must have been awful um and then the police call off the public from the searching because now they're expecting to find a body so they now ask the public not to search anymore they call all the searchers back they debrief them and say look we're now going to leave this to professional searchers we're going to leave this to the RNLI people that are used to dealing with something like this and the police, like we talked about, the police are sure that he's murdered her, but they have no evidence to suggest that he did. There's no trace of her. There's no, there's nothing to say that other than obviously finding this blood in the house, but they still haven't had the results to that yet. So they still don't know whether it's her or not. And he is still not releasing any information whatsoever. He's saying he doesn't know where he put her. So the police had conducted over 600 search cases. So these areas, 600 areas have been searched. This We're talking about caves. We're talking about valleys, rivers. They even had officers on ropes above valleys and, and being lowered into caves and places like that. And these like, not really holes, like, like wells kind of thing in the, in the, in the hillside. And there was still nothing. There was absolutely no, no trace of her, but she was five and she was small, very small. And so for a a grown adult, it's quite easy to carry something that tiny and it's quite easy to conceal something that tiny if you are quite adept at being out in the in in all weathers and all terrains, which he was. He used to work for the the Forestry Commission. So he's used to being out and about. He used to I think he used to volunteer for some sort of like coastal like an RNLI kind of thing, but he used to sort of volunteer for something like that. So he's very comfortable out in in the open. He's very comfortable and he likes to sort of portray himself as a bit of a SAS kind of Bear Grylls kind of man, really. <laughs> yeah. Which he's not. Sorry, Bear Grylls, but yeah, which he's not. So it takes us then <laughs> to the 5th of October. So this is the Friday um, after she went missing. And at quarter past six in the evening, the police get an email from the laboratory to say that the results from the blood spots in the bathroom are now in. They compared them to the DNA that they took from April's toothbrush and it's a match. Mm. So we now know that he was in his house. April must have been in the house or at least April's blood is in the house. In the house, yeah. And then they find blood, a tiny bit of blood on the inside, April's, April's blood on the inside collar of the fleece that he was wearing when he was arrested. And they also find DNA from April on the inside of his jogging bombs. Mm, And that just makes me really sad. Really, really, really sad. So now, obviously, they know that April's DNA is inside his clothes and her blood is in his house. The police now believe that this is a sexually motivated child murder. 
after putting all yeah. this together. Um, the custody clock's ticking now, so they have to go back to the CPS. Um, and they've basically got one more chance to interview him to find out if he's going to give anything away before they can go to the CPS and, and see if they can get a charge. Because other obviously they've got some pretty damning evidence in the fact that they've now got this blood and this DNA um, evidence. So, yeah, yeah you would think they, at this point they have enough to at least, you know, charge him with something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they, can, tra- they can charge him with the um, indecent images. They can charge him for that, but that's not going to get him, you know, mm-hmm. sort of tied up and arrested. Not, you know, not for good. So they then interview him in their final interview and they tell him that they found blood and that they found a full DNA profile of April. Do you know what is it? Do you know what his reasoning is for this? What's that? So Why he says, uh, "Am I gonna be mad?" You might be. You might be surprised how stupid he is. Um, okay. He he basically says he must have had April's blood on his hands from running her over, and he must have washed his hands and flicked them to dry them. So he made this like flicking motion, and. He said he must have been going to the toilet and he must have washed his hands and flicked them at the wall. And that's how, because when he ran her over, obviously, she must have been bleeding. But do you remember what I said about this is an important piece of information to remember? Yeah. He said there was no blood in the car. No blood. And yeah. there's no forensic blood. There's no forensics. I found nothing in the car. So he <sighs> says, I must have been mistaken. There must have been blood. Oh, <laughs> how stupid is he? Oh, what an oh idiot! Oh my god! So the police then <sighs> then switch to these images, and they sort of go in a bit hard on him and say to him, "So is this is this a build up of sexual frustration? Is this is this why you murdered her? Because you've been looking at these pictures? Were you masturbating to these pictures?" And he gets really angry. Mm-hmm. So he gets really angry at being depicted as a paedophile, yeah. even though which he is. It, which he is because he's he's been viewing indecent images of kids numerous times on his laptop. Yeah. So it's quite obvious yeah. he's a paedophile. But because of um, Dr. Joe Sullivan says that because of this um, this Rambo kind of persona that he portrays, he would not like to be portrayed as a paedophile because that doesn't fit with the image that he's trying to give off. So he gets really cross. What a piece of crap. I know. That guy's a piece of crap. He really is. He really is. Or as Captain would say, what is he? Piece of piece of shit. <laughs> piece of shit. Yeah. You're so better at that than I am. So he then <laughs> he, he then breaks down and they say, "Is there anything that you would like to say before we conclude this interview?" And he starts like really pathetically sobbing, and he says that he's really sorry for what happened to her, and that if he knew where she was, he would tell them. Hand on his heart, he would tell them. But so an hour later an hour after this he's then given the police are then given the go ahead by the go ahead sorry by the cps to then charge him with april's murder so they charged him on three accounts they charged him with the murder of april jones they charged him okay. with um the child pornography Im- images they charged him for possessing and and having those and they also charged him for perverting the course of justice because he quite obviously knows where she is but won't won't say anything oh okay so they've got him on three counts now when they took him to the you can see on this you can see on the set the the custody desk cctv when they take him to be charged and they read the charges to him not a flicker not a change of emotion no shaking of the head no i can't believe this nothing he just he just stands there nothing stone faced um so he was then taken, so the following Monday, so this was on the Friday, he was then told that he was going to court the following Monday. And there were hundreds of people lining the street to that courthouse. And they were throwing things at the van that brought him in. They were shouting, they were screaming at him. And over the next two weeks following this, so he was obviously charged on the Monday, following this, the forensic teams were obviously ripping this house apart. And they found more of April's blood in multiple locations all across his house. They also find human bone fragments in the wood burner Mm, in the living room. But they say that this couldn't conclusively be proved to be April's. However, they are that of a younger individual. So this he's then sort of 
charged and, and held whilst they build this case against him. And yeah. it took until the 14th of January 2013 for him to then go to Crown Court and he was found guilty of April's abduction and of her murder and then was sentenced to life in prison, which we don't do a lot here. We don't, mm -hmm. it's not like over there. Well, our life imprisonment, I think is like 25 years, but you can get out for good behavior, like half your sentence. Um, but over there, it's, over there, it's um, over with you. It's like a full term. That's it. Life. You're not. You're never coming out. There's no. There's no way you're coming out. Um, and for him, I think he's the only person. If I'm right, he's the only person in British history to be sentenced to a full life term, meaning a full life term without a body. And oh yeah, they branded him then as a premeditated killer and paedophile and said that he enjoys the stress and chaos that he caused to people and would therefore be a danger to the public so he was he was sentenced to life now on the 26th of september in 2013 april's funeral was held and they they buried the bone fragments that they had left they still he still wouldn't give up where she where she was um and on the 4th of August, and this is the one thing, I think this is a nice thing. On the 4th of August, his house was bought by the government and it was demolished. It was knocked to the ground while April's family watched so that nobody would ever have to live in that house. Nobody would ever have to be in there where, where, she, was, where she was, you know, killed. And the police had been sort of notified, had, had been sort of reported to say that a lot of the officers really suffered from this case because they felt really guilty that they could never find her, that despite everything that they did, I mean, they did this within a week. They literally got him, got him put in, into prison and held and, and got him within a week of, of this all happening. But they said that this was the one case that they would, they still regret never finding her. And to this day, he still hasn't given up her whereabouts. He still refuses to say where she is. <sighs> That's so fucked up. It is. It's really bad, isn't it? So her poor parents have never don't don't actually know for certain, yeah, where their little girl ended up. So I'm still re okay. As you're going through this, I'm I'm reading other stuff about this guy who's yeah. definitely a huge piece of crap. And like definitely. I'm reading like some of the stuff that that the jury heard during during like trial and stuff. And yeah, like, here like this, like he had search term. There were some search terms found on his lap laptop, which included naked young five year old girls. Yeah. Nudism, five-year-old girls, and yeah. British schoolgirl raped and murdered. Yeah. Uh, they also found images of the the Sohai murder victims, Holly yeah. Wells and Jessica, Jessica Chapman, Chapman on his on yeah. his laptop. Yeah. Oh my god! And that like, was another case. Is... If you don't know that case, I mean, I think probably every British person knows the Soho murders case. That was a case where there were two young girls, Jessica Chapman and Holly Wells. They were best friends, and they were I think they were playing outside and they went missing nobody could find them they did this massive hunt to try and find these two girls and the caretaker of their school was interviewed saying you know look we've got to find them blah 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 his girlfriend was um you know there with him saying all this and it worked out in the end that mm -hmm. he was responsible for murdering the two girls and disposing of their bodies so that was another young girl they were both really young girls that were that were abused and, and murdered. And that's, that would be why he's looking at that case. Cause it's basically the same sort of thing that he's done. That's so disgusting. Now, the fact, disgusting. Yeah, it is totally disgusting. And the fact that he worked in an abattoir, I think, you know, that will then lead you to make some sort of decision as to what happened with April, how we got her into the, you know, into the wood burner. Oh. Um, because he's obviously mm. did that kind of thing for a job. So the, the thing I don't like, the thing I don't like to do is is focus too much on the the person that he is and the person that you know the, the person that killed. I don't want to make this all about him. I think that yeah, for the for the family's sake, he is a nasty piece of work that obviously needs castrating and stringing up somewhere to be honest and i would really like to give i would really like to give april's mum and dad 10 minutes in a cell with no cctv with that guy oh yeah <laughs> they deserve that definitely at, at least they, yeah right? exactly and i hope that i hope that prisoners that 
obviously sex offenders and things like they're always kept on separate wings and i hope that you know one day when he gets out uh, out of his little wing i hope that one day something really awful happens to him just to kind of make mm. some sort of come up and to him there are a few good things to have come out of this now april there was a there's a law that was um put to the houses of parliament called april's law and this called for sex offenders to remain on the register for life um yes it was an online petition it reached more it was a hundred thousand signatures that they got the second time around because they did it the first time i think it was about seventy thousand the first time the second time it reached a hundred thousand so it was actually debated in parliament but the Supreme Court ruled that sex offenders should have the right to appeal against staying on the register for life. Now, the, the, I don't know how it is in, in America, but here, the sex offenders register, I don't think it's always fair. Um the, a yeah. person can go on the sex offenders register if they are 18 years old and they're in a club and a 16-year-old girl is also in the club on a night out and you know, they, they have sex and someone finds out and then that guy is then put on the register, not knowing that that girl was 16. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so that's in, the same here. Yeah, so in that case, I don't think that that man deserves to be on the register if he didn't know that she was under 18. What was she doing in a club at 16? I mean, it doesn't make it mm-hmm. right if, if, it was un- if it wasn't consensual sex. Obviously, it doesn't make it right. But if it was consensual sex and she was in a, a place for adults and she's only 16, then I don't think that puts that man at fault. Yeah, I agree. Like, there's, there's been situations here where, um, you know, even if they're not even 18, let's like say a 17 year old boy or 18 year old boy gets a, an image from a girlfriend, right. Yeah. Who is under the age of 18. Yeah. Well now that kid now has, is in possession of child pornography. And That's the same here. Be put on, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think anyone under the age of 18 should be sending pictures like that to begin with. No, definitely. But, but teenagers don't do think this it, kind of thing. They do. Yeah. And so, you know, it's not the same as say like a, like a, like an older man, like, you know, um, Mark Bridgers, you know, looking at, you know, five-year-old or whatever. Exactly. So, yeah, I think, I, I do think that you, there needs to be something that protects people in those yeah. that type of situations. So I don't, I think from his, from the Mark Bridger situation, I don't think he deserves any protection whatsoever. And I think if you are a parent oh, no. and if he lives in, if he comes out of prison and moves near your house, I think you've got the right to know that there's somebody who is a registered sex offender that is actually a sex offender living close to your house. I think that you should be able to, you should be able to um, know that. Um, but for and somebody with like Mark we, Bridger, yeah. With Mark Bridger, if it wasn't April, it was going to be someone else. And it could have been multiple someone exactly, else. Exactly. Exactly. It was just he that was, she was in the wrong place mm-hmm. at the wrong time. And he just happened to prey on the fact that she was small. And he knew he knew her. He knew of her. So, it, you know, he might have known that she had, you know, learning difficulties. He might have known that she couldn't walk very far without a little bike. Mm-hmm. And I uh, thank God her friend was was there and was yeah. able to witness this. Right. Because so not, she wasn't able yeah. to identify the car and yeah. identify that as a left left hand driving car. Yep. The CCTV wouldn't have been looking for that car. So all exactly. thanks to that little girl, she's you know, she's managed to to help bag a, a complete monster. And that's what he is. He's a monster. He's a predatory monster. And he does not deserve to be free anytime soon. And I'm glad that they've put him away for life because he doesn't deserve to, he doesn't deserve to be out and he would be a danger to the public. This sort of thing just doesn't go away. You know, it's not like he's going to be in there and they get rehabilitated and stop feeling yep. those feelings. No, no, no. He, he is a very, very sick man. And I know that there are people because I've, I've, I've listened to discussions and I've participated in discussions where people have said, but he's not very well and he deserves to, um, he deserves to be, you know, rehabilitated and see if there's some way that they can help him. But I don't, somebody with so many um, psychopathic traits as him, I don't think Mm -hmm. this would ever stop. I don't think it's going to be something that he will come out of prison and be a new person. He's always going to have those feelings because that's, you know, that's how he feels. You know, that's, that's what, that's what sexually turns him on that kind of thing. And you can't really, train yourself out of that 
It's not something you can teach yourself not to feel. Can we castrate people? Yeah, they used to do things. Oh, they used to threaten things like ke- chemical castration and stuff like that. But yeah, I think the human rights people will get behind that and say, "Oh, you can't do that because it's not within his human rights." But then I look at that and say, well, "What about what about April's human rights? What exactly. about hers? You know, where were her human yeah. rights? Where did he? He's an adult. She's a child, and he should know better. He should, even if he was feeling like that, he should not. He shouldn't have acted on it." I have a I have a really really hard time believing that this just happened to come out just one October day right and this is the first time that these feelings have come out and the first may okay possibly is the first time he acted on it mm. possibly yeah but this isn't the first time he felt like that obviously because he's searched yeah. stuff like that on the internet and because of because of April's case April's mum and dad launched this um, appeal for search engines to stop people accessing indecent images of children mm-hmm. and they actually managed to pass that and have a lot stricter um, rules for search engines to be able to act, people to and I think that's where the whole dark web thing comes in isn't it because they've made this a lot harder for people to search stuff like that flags come up as soon as people start searching things like that surely there must be some sort of algorithm on the normal search engines that would flag that up as soon as you put that into a search engine yeah because there would yeah. be no if way you're... you should be looking at something like that even if you're researching a case that is something i do not want to see so that is not something yeah. that i'm going to try and look for because i just i don't want to see it i mean i know once again people are going to be like oh what about privacy but anytime someone puts into google Naked you give, young yeah. five year old girl. Yeah, you give away ding, your ding, right ding. to privacy. Woo, woo, woo. Here goes the police yeah. come knocking on your door. Exactly. Seriously. Yeah. There's no there's no I, I have no problem of police having access to my computer and check in if you know, if I was to type in something like that, I would expect them to to find me because they they should. <laughs> and I should be yeah. strung up for that kind of thing. So I if you've got nothing to hide, you know, you shouldn't be putting things like that into a computer. Yeah. It just makes me sick. These sort of cases really make me sick. Yeah. And it's sad oh, that they that there's even a case like this for us to to for us to present. It's 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 very very sad. Yeah, luckily I think it's it's lucky. I think we're lucky that this one was solved so quickly. Yeah, and, definitely. And he was apprehended so quickly. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think it could have been a lot worse. So, I think thanks to that little, oh. that little girl, I'm so glad that April was playing with her friends, and it's so glad that mm-hmm. the little girl mentioned and took notice of the kind of car that she got into. And oh, I think yeah. I think people for a long time when this happened, I think people sort of hugged their kids a bit tighter and you know really empathised with, with April's mum and dad because. I know from reading different things that April's mum's written online and things that she's said, interviews that she's done since, it totally ripped their family apart. Totally. It yeah. destroyed April's mum. This is absolutely heartbreaking. It is. It's such a heartbreaking oh, any case. case. Like this. Yeah. Any case like this is heartbreaking. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's one of those things that I'm hoping that one day the bastard might tell people where she is, maybe. But yeah looking at, at, at the psychological profile of him, it doesn't look likely. Where it's tr- the trash bag has to be somewhere. Yeah. Something. Yes. You know, she's, she's been put somewhere and hopefully she's at peace wherever she is. Um, and you know, hopefully one day we'll know where she, where she is and her mum and dad might get a little bit of not closure exactly. Cause it's not really closure. Is it? It's probably even more heartbreaking I just think it's sad for her mum and dad that this is constantly, every day, there's no sort of, now we know what happened, we know where she is, we know why. Mm -hmm. They're just always going to question this. And I think that's what people like him, that's the kind of thing that they hold on to, is the fact that they've got a tiny little bit of power. It's just like, you know, the Golden State Killer. They've got that tiny Mm -hmm. little bit of power because it's something that they won't release because that's always going to be their little thing. And it's sad and it's small penis syndrome, I think. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're absolutely right. It's disgusting. Oh, absolutely disgusting. Well, Cherry, um, thank you for sharing yeah. this with us. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's not a very nice case, but I wanted to I wanted to um give you a case from Britain, one of our sort of more well known cases. And yeah, sadly it's it's not a very nice one, but 
thank you very much for listening. Thank you for all your messages on um, Instagram. We've had quite a few really nice um, feedback from the show so far. So I'm glad that you're enjoying it. We love your messages. We get very excited and do happy little dances when you message us <laughs> quite a lot. <laughs> oh, we do. Oh, my goodness. You know what we forgot to do today? Oh, we forgot to say thank you, didn't we? Oh, God, we did. Yeah, I think you should you should do the thank you. We got a thank you from some very special people for for amazingly signing up to our to our Patreon. Um, we've got our own Patreon. We've done some little episodes that are available only to our Patreon crew. Um, yeah. And yeah, we've got some new people that have signed up, and we're very very appreciative. Thank you so much for your support. We really really appreciate it. Yeah, we have. I want to thank uh, Aaron and Mark woo, woo. and. They're they're from Parts Unknown. We have Ira, Ira, who is from Nova from Scotia. Nova Scotia. Hello, Ira from Nova Scotia. And I guess we have one very, very, very special thank you to Tara. Yes, Yard, oh. from Yardley, PA. Oh, hoodie loving, hoodie loving Tara. Yeah, and uh, she's my sister. Um, <laughs> She's amazing. <laughs> She's very supportive she is of our show. She's absolutely amazing. amazing. So thank you. But thank you all for being Patreons. Yeah. Patreons. Patreon. Do we ever decide what we're, what, what they are? Patri. The Patri- crew. I. I think we did it. The crew. The crew. We couldn't, we couldn't work out what sounded good. Cause like <laughs> Patri sounds like you've got some sort of disease. So we don't want to disease <laughs> these people. So I think it was just our little Crimepedia crew. Yeah, our little Crimepedia crew. If you want to be uh, part of our Crimepedia crew, you can by signing up for Patreon. You just go to patreon.com backslash Crimepedia. And you can find all the good, cool stuff as well. We've got some really cool stuff. I mean, you've been like merching us out. I know. Well, yeah, we, we, you know, I have some cool stuff. You do yeah, have some cool stuff. Those pins are pretty cool. They are really, those especially like we've got like cool. a rainbowy, oily effect one, haven't we? Which is really oh, the, amazing. Oh, the holographic one? I mm-hmm. love that one. We've got a holographic mm-hmm. pin, and it's amazing. Oh, yeah. And Love it. We will be, sort of, yeah, I think we should sport our Crimepedia hoodies in the winter. When it starts to get cold, we'll have to post some Instagram pictures of us in our little hoodies and stuff. And you've yeah. got, like, you've got one, you had, like, a pin on your mask, didn't you? <laughs> no, really I, yeah. Pin. That was cool. The I little, like the, little uh, the, the, uh, the skull with the yeah. crown on it. On that, it worked perfectly i think now my cool. wife was like my wife looked at me like i was crazy she was like what is that on your mask <laughs> i'm like it's cool it is cool everybody wants one obviously <laughs> you need to go and pin one on your wife's mask when she's not looking it's good, like it's really cool you need to be down with the kids you need to have a crimepedia pin everyone's gonna like envy you for that mm-hmm. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. so yeah thank you so much for joining us this week we really appreciate it and hopefully you've enjoyed today's episode as always you can catch us on all the different social medias we're on there somewhere and that's it from us so yeah i'm cherry he's morgan and for this week all there is left to say is come on you're supposed be... to be nice oh i know i know you suck be it. nice <laughs> oh, oh can i do the man. bye then that means i can do the bye oh yeah 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 you get the bye this week Okay, I get the bye. Bye!